Everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the storage feature on your router, how to configure FTP, media and print server on a router with a USB port, and also how to connect a printer to the router and make it accessible within your network. If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog, you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it, to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. Most present-day routers featuring a USB port can be configured to use a number of additional functions. For example, by connecting an external storage, for example, a hard disk, you can build your own server to keep videos, photos and other files. By configuring the storage sharing feature, you will be able to access the files on such disk from any computer or mobile device within your network. And when you connect a printer to your router, any device within this network will be able to print out documents. Such connection lets you print from any device connected by Wi-Fi and sparing you the efforts of unplugging all the wires and cables. Let's begin with storage sharing and configuring an FTP server. For starters, find out if your router has a USB port. If it does, you can move on to configure an FTP server and arrange access from the local network and internet to files inside the local storage device. In fact, it is very convenient, and as soon as you try it, you'll ask yourself, how could I be without it before? By the way, you can access the files in your storage not only from the local network, but also remotely, from anywhere on the Internet. All you need to know is the external IP address you obtain from your Internet provider. This way, you will be able to access your files in the external hard disk connected to the router from virtually anywhere, as long as you have an Internet connection. I will show you all the settings with the example of this router, TP-Link Archer C20. Connect a hard disk or USB drive to the router and open its settings. Make sure the router is turned on. Open any browser and type the router address. You can see it on the special sticker. Give the default name and password, admin and admin. Go to the tab USB settings, storage sharing. In this page, you can configure the USB drive connected to the router. You will also see properties of the shared device, that is, share name, path, user access rights, and status. Click Enable to turn on shared access to a storage device. When you see the drive is connected, move on to the tab FTP Server. By default, it should be turned on, and if it isn't, just click on Enable. After the drive is connected, a directory with the name problem will be created by default, providing access to all files in such drive. The right, where the directions are given. You need to give the username and password to be granted access. This is the same data you have to enter when trying to open the router settings. The default values admin and admin. Open the Windows Explorer on your computer and go to the address specified in the router settings. If the address is correct, you will be requested to enter the username and password. When you log in successfully, you will see the files stored on this USB drive or external hard disk connected to the router. All these files will be displayed in the Volume folder. Here, you can also create new folders and copy your files there. View the available files and add new. Open the file explorer and select Map as Drive. In the window that appears, copy the network drive address into the folder field, click Browse, confirm your choice of the folder and click Finish. The folder containing files will appear at once. If the system asks you for a password, enter it. 
The network drive will be displayed in the file explorer when you click on this PC and you will be able to access the drive in no time. If you are using a mobile device, you need to connect to your router's network and use a file manager to access the network drive. Download any file manager software, for example, ES File Explorer. If you have an Android phone or a tablet PC, you can use this file manager to open a folder in your local network. But the first thing you need is to connect to your network by Wi-Fi. After that, install the application from Google Play Store. Stop the application, open the menu, go to Network, LAN, and you will see the network address of the folder. Tap on it and you will see the volume folder with all of its files. If you go to LAN and there is nothing to display, tap Scan, and all network devices within this network should appear. Now just select the device you want to connect to. You may see a window asking you for the login and password to proceed with connecting. Now you can do many things right from your phone view, delete and copy new files, create new folders, and so on. In order to create a new one, fill in the fields below. Choose an index for the new user, give a username, enter the password, and then re-enter it for confirmation. Click Set, and the new user will appear in this table. You can also enable, disable, delete, or edit a user account. Now let's go back to the tab FTP Server. In this tab, you will see a table which contains, by default, one network storage volume. This way, access is permitted to the entire drive, that is, its root folder. If you want, you can create one more folder, access to which would be granted to a particular user or group of users with certain rights. Otherwise, you can modify access rights to the entire storage device for a certain user account. Let us create one more shared item by selecting Add New Folder. In the field Share Name, tap the folder name and click Browse. Select your drive and specify the necessary folder. Please note that you cannot select a folder if its name is given in letters other than Latin. If that's your case, you will have to rename it. You have three variants to choose from – Full Access, Read Only, No Access. Then click Apply. The chosen folder will appear in the table and you can see access rights from every user account. You can configure the user access to each folder by clicking the Edit button. Media Server in this page, you can configure the media server. To do that, plug an external USB hard disk drive or USB flash drive into the router. Click the Enable button to stop the media server. Click the Add New Folder button to specify a folder as the search path of media server. Then click the Browse button to select the folder to share and click Apply. The folder will appear in the table where you can add it or delete it. You can also choose Auto-Scan and set the interval for automatic scanning here in this drop-down list. If you do it, the media server will search shared folders automatically. When you create a shared folder, you can visit this page to see its name, file system type, path and delete it if necessary by clicking on the corresponding button. Go to the web interface of your router, open the tab USB settings, print server, to check if the connected printer is displayed here. The server status should be online, and if it's offline, click Stop. Open settings, devices, devices and printers. Click Add a printer and choose the printer that I want is listed. Tick Add a printer using a TCP IP address or host name and click Next. From the drop-down list, select TCP IP device 
and set the IP address of your app. This is the same address you have used to open its web interface. Click Next again. The computer will start detecting the port, so you'll have to wait a little bit. Select device type as custom and move on to settings. Set LPO protocol, give any key name and click OK to confirm the choice. Next. At this stage, select the device driver. You can choose the manufacturer and the model from the list. Alternatively, you can click on Windows Update, wait for the list of available devices to appear, and choose it from there. You can also download the driver from the manufacturer's official website. Then click Have Disk and give the path to the folder where you have extracted the driver. If you have already installed this device before, you'll be asked what driver version you'd like to use. Choose Replace the current driver and click Next. If necessary, rename it. The printer setup is complete. When you see the message that you have successfully added the printer, print the test page. Go to the official website of your router and choose Support – Download Center. Specify your router model and choose its hardware version. Choose utility below and download it, then install and run it. In the Programs window, you will see your router and the printer. Right-click on the printer and choose Set Auto Connect Printer, tick the box and click Apply. Now you can open any document and try printing it. From MRMIT TV. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to keep you updated for our next video. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Blogger, MRMIT TV, at your service.